So buying a new sawmill is really expensive. And when you start adding options, that just drives your cost up even more. There's one option that most people will recommend, and you might want to think twice about it. It will probably take 50 to 70,000 board feet before it pays for itself. I'm talking about the debarker, of course. It's usually about a $1,500 option. What it does is it runs in front of the blade and knocks off the bark before the blade enters the cut. And it makes it a little easier for your blade to cut. Now usually, the bark is the toughest part of the log to cut through. It contains all kinds of sand and mud and dirt and sometimes rocks. And blades aren't designed to cut through dirt and rocks. It's designed to cut through wood. So anytime you cut through dirt, it's gonna dull your blade out faster. Now some people will tell you you'll double your blade life when you add a debarker. But my experience has shown it's not that simple. I've seen about a 15 to 20% increase in blade life on average. There's a lot of factors that affect this, namely the size of your logs, the species, and how dirty they are. Now, regardless of what you're cutting, you're gonna to have to cut through some bark. Usually it's about three cuts to get through bark before you start getting to wood. Now with a smaller log, you may have about 20 board feet or so, but you still have three cuts to get through the bark to get to that 20 board feet. But now if you increase your log a little bit, you may have 150 or 200 board feet of lumber, but you still only have those three cuts to cut through the bark. So as you get to larger logs, you don't see as much of a return on that debarker. But even more important than that is what happened to your logs before they got to the mill. If they were skidded through mud and dirt and rock, it doesn't really matter what species they are. There's gonna be all kinds of crap that's picked up in that bark and it's gonna just tear up your blades. Now I've done the math and I won't bore you with the details, but basically it's gonna take about 50 to 75,000 board feet before you, the cost savings of your blade changes are gonna pay for the debarker. Now on the low side of the spectrum, a lot of people report around 150 board feet before the debarker, and after the debarker, they get about 300 board feet. They get about double. In which case, it's gonna take about 30,000 board feet to break even. Now that's assuming about $15 per blade, which covers the resharpening and a little bit extra for labor and blade life. Now on the other end of the scale, and more what I've seen, is I get about 250 to 300 board feet without a debarker, and with the debarker, I get about 350. So it takes about 150,000 board feet to pay for a debarker with those numbers. And this is all assuming your debarker is adjusted and working properly. As I've found out the hard way, and you guys have reminded me in your comments, it's really easy for the debarker to come out of alignment. On a wood miser, you work on the left side of the log and the debarker comes in on the right side. So it's out of sight, out of mind. And it's not something you think about as you're running the mill. It's also got about a 20 to 30 inch swing and it's just difficult to get into alignment because you've got about an eighth inch window that you've got to keep that blade in through that entire swing. And it swings on an arc. So you could be in alignment on the inside and outside and out of alignment in the middle or some flavor of that. But I don't want to be sitting here hating on debarkers all day. They are very effective at what they do. I just want to put things into perspective because it is a pretty significant investment up front. So whether you cut customer logs or you buy from a logger, there's a good chance those have been skidded around and they can very easily pick up stone and rock in the bark and get embedded in it. And there's nothing that's gonna kill your blade faster than a piece of rock. So it is a really good accessory and I do highly recommend it if you can afford it. But if you're a little tight on funds, I recommend you looking at some sharpening equipment first. But you're gonna to wanna to check out this video to find out the one detail that most people overlook.